everyone. Welcome to the Drinks with Jess podcast. This is Jess Brandish, your host, and this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share in each other's missions and help each other grow. We are all in, which makes it a great time for you to catch up on your podcast. By the way, if you are new to listening or watching this show, please go on to YouTube, iTunes, iHeartRadio. Uh, what else is there? Spotify, whatever distribution channel you listen to, we are there. You can also go on to brandisenterprises.com slash be hyphen the hyphen voice and not only find information about this show, but all the others on the Be The Voice network. And you can also finally get on to dwjphl.com for all of my social media links and any links to the archive shows. But I hope everybody is doing well. And I am very, very, very excited today because I have Mr. James Hauk on here, fashion designer extraordinaire, who I absolutely adore because he has to be the, and I've said this on my live feeds, if you guys have been checking out the live feeds lately since we're on quarantine, he is probably one of the best looking men that I know. So James, I am so glad that we finally got to have you on. How are you, man? Good. It's so nice to see you, Jess. I know. It's been a long time. I know. I'm in fact, I, I think we were only in each other's physical presence once. And that was oh, for really? the Global Sisterhood event. Yeah. And, it, and seems I, like, it seems like more. I follow you so much. Uh, and I follow <laughs> you so too. Dynamic. You feel like you're here all the time. At, well, I hope so. And, and you are the same in my household because I constantly uh, keep my eye on you. But what I, I love about the work that you're doing, and I, not only do I get to see it, but a lot of the models that are wearing your designs are people that I know. Mm -hmm. which is amazing because you see them in such a beautiful light and they wear it so well. I mean, when I see them, I, I could see them walking in sweatpants through the hotel before we're getting ready for an event. And then all of a sudden they come out with something just ridiculously amazing. And I want to know how, how did this all start? Because it's very rare that you know or get to hear the backstory of a fashion designer. Um, I actually have no idea, really. Um, <laughs> you know, um, it's kind of funny. Uh, you know, I actually started in uh, professional sports. I, I, I was a professional fighter for a long time. Oh, and, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, I, I actually still fight and I still teach today. But um, um, yeah, and uh, it just so happened that I was getting into photography. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the photography studio that I was hoping to become a partner in um, they happened to be doing a shoot for American Eagle, mm -hmm. and, um, and and it, it, it's kind of weird circumstances. But I I that day I brought in some of my paintings. I like to paint, mm -hmm. and um, the one of the higher ups at American Eagle had seen my paintings and just happened to say that day, um, can you possibly take what you do in your paintings and and transfer them to clothing? And I I said I have no idea, but you know I'll, I'll try. I just sort of tried on a lark kind of. Mm -hmm. And um, it just, it snowballed pretty quickly. People really liked what I did. And, and um, then I, I decided to go out on my own. And mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, you know, the store uh, Barney's New York, they're, they're pretty much the best store in the world. And um, I, uh, that was the first store I actually approached on my own, mostly because of my attitude. Everybody said, you know, I said, what's the best store in the world? And they said, Barney's New York. And uh, everybody said, well, you, you can't actually talk to Barney's New York or go to Barney's New York. And I said, okay. And then I went to Barney's New York <laughs> and I went in the front door and I sold them myself the first day. See, I, I love that. I think that people have such a fear thinking that they can't do something. I, I mean, agree. I remember there a long time ago, I, it was probably more than 20 years ago. And I did a short stint where I, I was a financial advisor and then I started doing insurance. Mm -hmm. And I had to go out and do cold calling. And I was young. I still mm -hmm. put on my suit, you know, and, and went out on the road every day. And I was traveling around with another salesperson. I said, oh, I said, there's Bear. And I was in Pittsburgh at the time. I said, there's Bear Corporation. I said, let's mm -hmm. stop. And she said, you're like a 20-year-old <laughs> kid. You can't stop there. I said, watch me. I walked right the hell in. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you know, didn't get the account, but I did walk right in. And uh, we have we have the same attitude, Jess. <laughs> but I I think that's a good thing to share because people have so many goals or dreams, but they just 
they don't have the balls to go and do it. They just have this block like, oh, this is a big person. They're not going to talk to me or – I mean, you know how many celebrities I've contacted on Instagram mm -hmm. who have said, yes, I will be on your show? Mm -hmm. Just awesome. because I asked, you know? So yeah. I want people to get out there and ask. But, I mean – how do people respond when it's like you're a fighter and a fashion designer? Like that's such a, a like two worlds. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I think people like one of my uh, best friends said to me recently, he said, you know, you're unusually unusual, <laughs> which is very true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, I think people find it interesting, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it's good. Um, just in life anyway to, to have balance i think mm -hmm. it's i think it's good to um you need that balance you need to have um physicality as well as you know mm -hmm. your more ethereal thoughts you know you need to you need to work on your body too and mm -hmm. and um you know i don't want to make it sound as though like i had some great talent or anything i think so much maybe in life is synchronicity i mean i think you do will some things to happen you have to have, you have to be very positive and and uh, but but it, there is synchronicity as well. I know I was lucky too in a lot of ways as, as well. And I feel so terrible. You wouldn't believe how many kids come up to me almost every day and say, you know, I, I'm I'm I went to FIT. I went here. I went I went there. How come you're in these stores and I'm not in these stores? Like mm -hmm. I don't understand. And so, I mean, sometimes I feel guilty, but I also for some reason I I have an ability to know, you know, what sells and and. Beyond what sells, I don't do anything that doesn't have integrity. I mean, mm -hmm. anything I design or make is something that's important to me and has meaning. I don't, I don't do anything just for the sales of it, really, I don't think. I, I'm going to have you design me a black tea collection, <laughs> and I will sell them online because everybody knows me with a black tea. I, 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 think, that's, that. I think we should make an LGBT black tea design. Mm-hmm. For, for all the for all the LGBT women out there, do a black tea design. I'm gonna That's send you I'm gonna send you some right away because actually I already make the best black t shirt in the world. So do you I'll really you if yeah. if you if you make a good black t shirt, mm -hmm. I will wear it and plug you on every episode for the okay. next year. You got I, it. I uh, it provided I get to have one with my logo on it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, see, that's how you do it. That is how you do it. But I mean, thinking about that, and every time I see your pictures, um, and I, did you have did you have a stint in modeling? Because you're adorable. Like all the pictures that you have on Facebook, I'm like, why don't I look that good? Oh, please. you know, you make you make my day. Thank you. That's really nice of you. Um, no, I no, of course I never modeled. I, you know, it's funny. I actually did do a little bit of fitness modeling because I used to have a great body. I don't any, anymore, but <laughs> back in my fighting days. But mm -hmm. um, uh, I did a little bit of modeling, yeah. Yeah, because I remember the first time I met you when I came up to you. I didn't even. I was very excited to meet you. I didn't even think you knew who I was. But then oh. again, we were both on like the you know hot list banner, I guess that that <laughs> Shelly had put up for the event. Yeah. And when I came up to you, the first thing you said to me is, you're so hot. That made my day. You are. That, I, like, James is telling me I'm hot. Like, that made my entire evening. I'm sure you know that you just light up a room. Any Anybody <laughs> would be drawn to you as soon as they see you. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? My theory is, James, if I'm in a bad mood, even if I'm, I'm supposed to go to an event, if I'm in a bad mood, I will not go. Because if my <laughs> attitude is wrong, it will fill that room. <laughs> you know? You want to know something funny? A lot of people say to me, like in my business and stuff, they'll say, Hey, let's let's go out on the town. Let's let's tear the town apart. And I'm always like, oh yeah, I'd like to do that, but I I'm not a going out person. When you mm -hmm. said to me, you have to come and let's go tear down the town. Mm -hmm. I, that's all I want to do is do that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't like to be. I I guess maybe I'm more of a control freak. I don't like to be forced into anything. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I will do the forcing. I will tell people that they have to show up. <laughs> I, I do not like to be forced. In fact, if there is something written on my calendar two weeks in advance, by the day that event comes up, I'm like, uh, I, I call one of my friends on the phone. I'm like, uh, 
but you know, it might rain tonight or, and, and they say to me, yeah, you've already decided you're not going like that's, <laughs> which is a shame, but that that's, that's how I am now. I wasn't like that years ago, but yeah. I, I do get like that now, but I'm what we're going to do, that way too. I'm not great with rules or anything really. Yeah. For yeah no, I, I, I bend them and break them. I don't even stop <laughs> at the bending. I just break them. I just break them. <laughs> but what we're going to do, James, we're going to take a short break. And for the rest of you out there, we are going to come back with more drinks. Jess, stay tuned. The Drinks with Jess is making a big splash. It's time to join forces and step outside of our comfort zones. There is strength in union. It's time for people to tell their stories and make a difference. That is what we aim to do. The Drinks with Jess podcast is where we bring the LGBT community and its allies together to share each other's missions and help each other grow. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Bringing you amazing guests that cover a wide variety of topics and are inclusive to all cultures and communities. Join us on this amazing journey. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Drinks with Jess podcast. This is Jess Brandish, your host. And again, this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share each other's missions and help each other grow. I am joined by James Houck, beautiful man, fashion designer extraordinaire. And I am, I really am excited because we, we really don't get to talk very mm-hmm. much. And I, I find everything that you do so intriguing because I, I'll look at a post and you have some artwork up there. I'll look at another post and there's like a, a photograph of a dress that you designed and and every time I see pictures of you you're like working out or it's a previous picture and you're in something else now do you have like a signature and I'm I'm asking at you as a professional do you have just a signature look or do you just play with everything um I I think I do um um especially if it's um you know the more couture side the, the dresses and stuff like that mm-hmm. that's much more of um something i do just for myself as an artistic e- expression mm-hmm. um i i sell some that i make specifically for people but I, that's not my main business my main business is denim and and workwear and things like that and um i uh so when i'm doing my business side of things i definitely do have a look and, and I, I like to call it uh, I like to design from mid-America out so um, I, I have a, a lot of I have history with with ranches and farms and and mm-hmm. uh, I like everything to be timeless and authentic mm-hmm. now I, I love that you mentioned denim because I have had a problem lately in like the past year or two finding a good pair of jeans now I went to the Levi's outlet and I got I got those original button fly 501 jeans that were my favorite back in the day because they are denim with no stretch because now everything has a stretch material in it and I cannot find another pair of jeans that I like. I do not like that stretch material. I don't like how it feels. I, I, I don't enjoy what happens when, you know. What do you think about, um, you know, I, I like to um, collect vintage denim. Have you ever thought about vintage? Uh, I, I I might have to do that when we're allowed out again. I could see you in a like a nice nineteen fifty nine pair of Levi's five oh ones. Oh Yeah. <laughs> see that's what I'm talking about. But I don't know why there was such a switch into the stretch field. I can understand if they're saying it's more durable, but there's something about that original denim. That it just it fades the right way, it rips the right way, because obviously mm-hmm. I, I pretty much wear ripped jeans all the time. Although I did get a pair of jeans that has no holes in it, just to please, you know, my mother. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that that's how it goes. But I mean, I, it's sad I, to say, but most most things boil down to cost usually, and that's mm-hmm. and and origin of manufacture. You know, m- most denim comes from China now, and it's. It has a poly mix, so it has it's 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 not it's not the same as it used to be. Mm-hmm. So so if you're working with things like denim and you're pushing from Middle America out, how like especially right now when we're all kind of laying low, how hard is it? Because you do have to travel a lot for your business. How hard is it to keep things going at a time like this? Um. I just have to look at this time as as a time of kind of um, 
kind of a, a design time. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny, my, um, my, my business partner who, who's in charge of all my manufacturing, he's actually staying in a, in a, a tent right now in LA because what? he's trying to self quarantine from his family. So we're talking and he's in a tent <laughs> and I'm in my pajamas, you know, in the basement just designing. So this is sort of a, um, a conceptual period, I mm -hmm. guess, right now. Do you, do you think it's going to affect and, and come out in not only your designs, but other people's designs for the next couple of months? The, this, because I, I feel as if designing does show what's going on at the time. And yeah. I, I feel as if it, it speaks for that year or that decade of what's going on in the public. I mean, we know music does that. We know uh, books do that. But in design, it also does that. Yeah, and like, like excess feels really wrong right now, doesn't it? Like, mm -hmm. wouldn't it feel, feel wrong to, you know, to have a lot of excess in your design? Or, or, you know, so we're, so we're getting back to the black tea. <laughs> I am thrilled. I'm going to be a trend again. <laughs> oh, you're timeless. That'll never go out of time. <laughs> I do. I, I, I think that in, in designs, it's going to, I feel like there's going to be a, a sense of kind of old school, returning to old school things. We're seeing that in, in culture. We're seeing that in families. Like now we see parents and kids going to the park again. We see, we see kids off of cell phones for a little bit. You know, people yeah. actually have the time to spend with each other. I feel like it's going back to like those old classic look days. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And if it weren't for the, the terrible circumstances, it's it's kind of nice to get back to to get back to family and get back to quiet times and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's nice to go to the park. Mm -hmm. Especially when the weather's nice, it's actually beautiful today, which I am loving. Mm -hmm. But James, I want everybody to be able to view, and for all of you that are watching, you can see some of James's uh, works uh, as you're watching this. But I want to know where people can find you so they can check out more of your stuff or even which stores that you're in so they can, mm -hmm. when we're allowed to go out shopping again, they can go and, uh, and help out because it, I consider you kind of like a local business, even though you're not, even though you're all mm -hmm. over the place, yeah. but still you're a Pittsburgh guy, you know, mm -hmm. which makes it wonderful. So where can everybody find all that information? Um, well, you know, most of the work I'm doing right now, it's, it's called a uh, private label design, which, mm -hmm. which means I do a lot of design work for people like Fashion Nova, uh, mm -hmm. Forever 21. I, I've mm -hmm. done a, a lot of their design work, mm -hmm. um, but then they get to take the credit for it. <laughs> but, uh, but my denim line does still sell in uh, Fred Siegel in California. Okay. Um, that's really pretty much the only place where where my line is right now. I think uh, Barney's. I might be in the uh, in in Barney's outlets right now, and I, I actually checked and I actually did have some stuff um, still in the Barney's outlet store. But um, uh, yeah, so there's not not too much out there right now as far as going to a store, unless uh, you won't see my name on it. But mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When you and I get together. And I, I do. I want like the the LGBT, you know, lesbian like me line. Mm -hmm. I don't, I I don't even it. know what it would be called, but but I want a line, mm -hmm. and I want to be photographed wearing your designs for that. I think we should work on it together. I think a little bit. You have, you are super cool. You got such a great look. Ah, oh, thanks. I'm getting older, man. I got to do it before. Uh, before everything goes haywire and gravity starts taking its toll. <laughs> you know how it rolls. Well, James, thank you so much. And for everybody out there, make sure you check out all of his information. You will see it on the screen. If not, you can find it in the show notes if you are just listening. James, you are a doll. For the rest of you, please go on to dwjphl.com and connect with me because I love connecting with you. And don't forget, during this quarantine, we have been doing live virtual happy hours every night on Facebook. We only have a couple of days left, kids, but we will continue to do them a couple of times a week as the quarantine extends just to make everybody happy. And I'm sure, James, you will be watching because you always do. I and I love it. it. <laughs> and I love it. So for all of you out there, stay safe, stay calm, stay home. That's what I want. And James, love you, man. Thanks, Jess. Love you.